What's up people, it's DevSage here and in this video I'm going to be teaching you how to build this sign up form with JavaScript form validation. Real quick, the code for this project is going to be on GitHub so be sure to follow me on GitHub and also star the repository when you get a chance. Alright, so let's take a look at what we're going to be building. So what we have here is we have this simple sign up form, it's a nice dark, simple, clean UI. And the sign up form has a username, email password and confirm password fields and it also has JavaScript form validation so if we were to click join without filling in any of the fields we can see that we have a few validation rules here such as password can't be blank email can't be blank and username can't be blank also let's say we got some of those things let's say we had a username a password and an email but our passwords don't match we have a validation rule that says the passwords must match uh, so what happens when we actually have a valid form is we have a success notification that comes up here and these notifications are being displayed via a JavaScript toast notification library. Okay, so let's get into building this. Okay, let's start off by adding our project files. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add index.html and we're also going to need a style sheet and a JavaScript script. So let's add let's add a file called style.css and then our JavaScript file can be main.js and now let's go to our index.html and let's add some boilerplate here and let's include our style sheet. So let's say link uh, style.scss or CSS sorry and then let's include our, our JavaScript file at the bottom of the body. Let's say script source main.js. Okay, so now we have our basic project structure. We've imported the project files we need. So now let's get to actually creating the UI of the form. And then later on, we can add the validation. Okay, so let's go down here and let's create the container for the form. So let's add a div with a class of container. And inside of that div, let's add an h3 with the class of heading. And this is going to be the sign up heading. And underneath that, let's create a paragraph with the class of description. And this is going to be some descriptive text about the sign up form. So let's just say join over 25 million users from around the globe. Okay. So now. Let's actually get to creating the actual form. So let's say form. And the action in this case is just going to be slash. It's not actually going to be submitting any information to a server. This project is just to demonstrate validation. So let's just leave that as slash. And inside of the form, we can start adding our form fields. So let's go down here and let's add a div with a class of input group. And inside of this div, we're going to create our first field. And it's going to be our username field. So we're going to say input type text. And now we're going to give that username field a name. It's going to be username. And we can also give it a placeholder of username. And we can copy this and paste it and use it for our email field. Except let's change the name to email. And the placeholder is going to be email. And we can go down and we can do the same thing for the password fields. So let's paste that. Now we do need to change this type text to type of password. Name should be password. Placeholder should be password. And we can do the same thing for the confirm password. Type is still going to be password. Name should be confirm password and placeholder confirm password. All right, so now let's create our submit button. So let's go down here and let's say button and let's give it a class of submit button and inside let's say join. Oh, and also a type of submit. Let's see how our form looks so far. Okay, so this is how our form looks so far. We have our sign up text, we have our description, we have our four form fields and we have our join button. All right, so now let's shift focus to actually styling this form and making it look nice. All right, so let's go to our style sheet 
And the first rule we're going to add is our HTML rule, and we're going to give it a height of 100% and a width of 100%. And underneath that, let's add our body rule, and let's set the font family of our body. So let's say font family, and Visual Studio Code gives me a list of font families I can pick from. I'm going to pick this Go UI font family. You can pick whatever you want, but just this is the one I'm going to pick. And now let's set the margin to zero and the overflow to hidden. And now let's go underneath here and let's add a rule for our heading, uh, anything with the class of heading. And remember, this is just going to be our, our sign up heading here. And we're going to set the font size and the font color of our heading. So let's say font size 1.25 EM and let's give it a white color, so FFF. And now let's style our description. It's gonna be the text right underneath the sign up heading. So let's say description, and let's give it a font size of 0.85 EM, and let's give it a grayish color. So let's say color, we're gonna say 999A9E, Okay, so now let's style the actual container for the form. So let's say dot container, and we're gonna say background. It's gonna we're gonna give it a dark background. So let's say three two three two three B, almost a black, a very dark gray, and let's say border radius, ten pixels, position absolute. And now let's actually center it. Let's center it vertically and horizontally. So let's say top 50%, left 50%, transform, translate, minus 50%, minus 50%. Let's give it a width of 250 pixels and some padding, 40 pixels by 60 pixels. And let's give it a box shadow. So let's say box shadow, one pixel, one pixel X, Y offset, 20 pixel blur, and a really, really almost black box shadow. Okay. So now we're done styling our container. Let's actually style the inputs inside of our container now. So let's say input group. And remember, these are the divs surrounding each of the inputs. So let's say input group and let's set the width of the input group to 100% and the margin to 20 pixels by zero. Okay, so now let's style the inputs inside of the input groups. So let's say input and in here we can set the width to 100% border one pixel solid gray it's going to be 444 four, four. let's give it a border radius of four pixels or five pixels let's set the background to almost black let's say 1d1 e22 color the color of the text inside of the input is going to be white the padding of the input is going to be 10 pixels by zero and let's actually indent the text of the placeholders so that it's not hugging the very left hand side of the inputs. So let's say text indent 15 pixels. Okay, so we're almost done styling. Now we have to style the join button. So let's go down here and let's say submit button. And we're gonna say border none with 100% border radius, five pixels. Let's give it some padding of 12 pixels by zero. Let's set the font size to 14 pixels. The background to a bluish color. Let's say 516AF4. Let's text align, center. And now we're gonna set transition of the background to 500 milliseconds ease. So when we hover over the submit button, we're gonna end up changing the background to another color. 
and here we're setting the transition speed of that transition so now let's just say color the color of the text in the button is going to be white all right and now one more thing let's actually create that rule to change the background on hover so let's say cursor pointer and then background f4 b6 5 1 okay so now let's take a look at what our form looks like currently all right so here we have our sign up form it's horizontally and vertically aligned we've changed the background color and we've styled the input fields giving them some border radius and some padding in between the beginning of the field and the placeholders and the join button changes to orange when we hover over it all right that's pretty cool in our demonstration we actually had a background here on the body and we also had this kind of blob thing on the side here uh, we can go ahead and add that now okay so for the background you can grab whatever image you want but I'm gonna grab an image that I found earlier so I'm gonna look up minimal desktop background I'm gonna find the link from addictive tips here 50 minimalist desktop wallpapers and there's a picture of some mountains down here that I like I think it's number 40 Yosemite yeah this is it so I'm gonna click view in gallery I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna open a new tab and instead of like downloading this I'm just gonna copy the link for it and we're just gonna use that link to basically import it and use it as our background here so if we go back to our style sheet we can go up to our body rule and we can set background URL and we can paste that link in and then we can say background size cover all right let's see how that looks so that brought our background in so now let's add the finishing touches and add our blob the blob you saw in the demo that was kind of floating in the left hand corner here so if we Google blob maker the first link here blobmaker.app is actually a tool that we can use to generate basically SVG blobs that we can export and use in our websites so we have these two sliders here that we can use to basically control what blobs are generated so this slider controls how many sides your blob has we're gonna leave this closer to the right and then this one controls how round your blob is we're gonna we're gonna drag this one over to the right as well and we can use this dice here to basically randomize which blob we get and I think I actually like this one it, this one actually seems like it could fit so uh, we're gonna we're gonna use this one but we're gonna change the color to a dark dark gray so let's take this and let's grab the SVG code here let's go back to our project and inside of our index.html we can paste our SVG here on the top level and we can save that and let's see what that did okay so that added the blob but it added it to the middle of the screen here like on the middle bottom part here so what we can do is we can reposition this to put it in the top left corner so the way we actually move this SVG around the page is we can modify the view box property here and also the transform property here so let's change this view box to say 150 by 200 and let's translate it not 100 by 100 but 20 by 10 and let's see what that does all right so as you can see we have our blob and it's moved to the top left portion of the screen here okay so now let's finally get to implementing the JavaScript form validation okay so let's first retrieve and import the toast notification library that we're going to use to display the validation errors so let's Google JavaScript toast library and we're going to go with the toastify.js link here we're going to say try or actually docs 
and if we scroll down we should find some CDN links that we can just take and import into our project so I'm going to copy this link and I'm also going to copy this JavaScript link here and we're going to import these two into our project so let's go here at the top and up here let's import the CDN link for the CSS and down here let's get the uh, JavaScript for the toast library so now we have imported our toast library so let's go over to our main.js and let's set up an event listener for our form element to listen for a form submission what we're gonna do when the form gets a submission is we're gonna perform the validation at that point so let's say const form equals document dot query selector oops query selector form and let's say form dot add event listener and this is going to be on submit we're going to pass in an event handler and now let's grab all the information from our form fields so let's say const username equals document dot query selector name equals username and we're going to grab the value out of that username field and we're going to trim it down to make sure that there are no white spaces on the front or back parts of it let's do the same thing for email document dot query selector name equals email oops email dot value dot trim now let's do password equals document dot query selector name equals password dot value dot trim and now confirm password document dot query selector name confirm password dot value dot trim all right so now that we have all of our values from our form let's create an array of errors and it's going to remain empty but if we encounter an error such as a blank username or blank email we'll add that error to this errors array and then at the end if we have any errors in this array we'll display all of those errors with our toast notification library so let's say if username equals the empty string then errors dot push oh, push username can't be blank oops or if email equals the empty string errors dot push email can't be blank or if password equals the empty string errors dot push password can't be blank or if the password is not equals to the confirmed password errors dot push passwords must match okay so at this point we've set up an event handler on the form to listen for form submissions uh, one thing we forgot to do actually is we're, we want to do event dot prevent default we want to prevent the default submission behavior of the form that is to submit some information to the server immediately we want to actually stop that default behavior and we're going to perform this validation and then after the validation was, is completed that will be the point where we will actually send information to the server but again that's beyond the scope of this tutorial but this line is important to make sure that your form doesn't actually go ahead and bypass your validation so let's see what the behavior is like now let's actually uh, go down here let's console log errors to be able to see what's going on okay so we have our form here let's actually open up the console and let's dock it to the right side 
and let's try filling out our form. Actually, let's not fill out our form and let's click join and see what happens. So as you can see, we have, uh, we click join and we have three validation errors. Username can't be blank, email can't be blank, password can't be blank. Let's try to fill out an email, I mean a username. Let's try again. Now we have two validation errors. Email can't be blank and password can't be blank. We don't, we no longer have the username can't be blank because we put a username in there. All right, so let's put a, a email and a password, but not a confirmed password. Now we only have one validation error, passwords must match. So let's make sure our passwords match, click join. And now our errors array is empty. So this would indicate a success scenario. And in this case, we would display our success notification. Okay, so at this point, we've done the necessary validation. Now we just have to display the errors, if any, to the user. So let's say if errors.length is greater than zero, then we want to loop over all of those errors and display a notification for each error. So let's say for let i equals zero, i is less than errors.length, length, i plus plus, and let's call toastify. This is our um, toast notification library that we imported. Toastify is gonna take in basically a configuration object. And this configuration object is going to describe how the notification should work, what should display in it, how long it should display, what styles it should have, so in this case, the text of the notification should be this error, whatever error it's on. So let's say errors at index i, and the duration of the notification, let's say it's gonna be four seconds, and let's position it. So let's say gravity, top, position, center. Let's style it, style, Let's set the background to some kind of error indicating color, like a red. So let's say um, DF1C24. That's going to give it like a reddish color. And after this, let's go down here and let's say show toast. And let's add another case. If we don't have any errors, we're going to say else. We're going to say toastify. We're going to pass in a configuration object and the text is going to be success. And let's add a smile in there. Okay. And now the duration of that is going to be also four seconds. Gravity, top, position, center, style background in this case let's let's make it a greenish color green tends to indicate success so let's say 4 b a b 4 e and now let's go down here dot show toast and now let's go back to our application to see how it behaves all right so we have our form now let's try submitting a blank form Password can't be blank, email can't be blank, username can't be blank. Let's enter a username and an email. Join. Password can't be blank. Let's enter a password, but no confirmed password. Passwords must match. All right, let's make sure the passwords match. Success. All right, and that is a little bit about JavaScript form validation. I hope you enjoyed this. Like I said, the code for this is gonna be in the description, so go ahead and check that out. Start the repository and follow me on GitHub. If you like this video, be sure to leave a like. Subscribe if you wanna see more content, more web dev explained simply. But other than that, peace.